Welcome, Morgan. Thank you so much oh. for coming. And I'm um, really looking forward to tonight's panel. It's some great talent here tonight. Mm -hmm. So I'm I met, really... I met Charlie finally, so that was cool. I never met him before. Oh. I met him years ago. I so. mean, digitally. In the fleshes, you know. Okay. It's a whole Different. new thing. <laughs> yeah. So um, do you want to tell me a bit about how you got passionate about Bitcoin and um, what happened and where it led you? Um, I learned about Bitcoin uh, from Max Kaiser and his wife on RT, the Kaiser Report, when it was about three, four bucks. And I was writing AI code to try to make machines talk to each other. And the first time I saw Bitcoin being used by kind of like the hacker underbelly kids on, on Twitter, I realized that, you know, if someone intelligent enough to put monetary value in something like that, never even heard of it, they're not dumb people. So I, that's what drove me to study it, is who was using it. And I realized that Bitcoin was being used on the internet, but not like in the real world. So the first thing I really thought about is how can I help Bitcoin be more usable? And make machines like laundry machines, gas pumps, parking meters, take Bitcoin payments, and door locks and Ubers and things like that. So I, the focus that really drove me into being involved in Bitcoin is machines and making machines listen to this type of money. And that's so cool because it, it also makes um, it very practical so that um, yeah. people don't actually even have to really if see it, do they? screen, like you don't know it exists, but yeah. if you pay a vending machine and chips come out or a Bitcoin ATM and cash comes out, that's one of my first um, shows to someone who doesn't believe in Bitcoin. Look, cash came out or look, a machine responded. And that's something that it makes it more monetarily valuable. Like if you're just selling your Bitcoin for dollars to spend dollars, that's going to make the value go down. But if you're buying Bitcoin to get chips out of a machine, it's going to make the price keep going up. So I think that's a, it's an economic motivator. It needs to be put to case uses, not used in the way that everyone thinks as money transfer. I think that the world of Tomorrowland or Terminator comes and it all depends on what money the machines are living on because they're going to feed us and they're going to open our doors and drive us around and it's either we're paying them to do that or they're doing it for free it's free to us but they're really sending bitcoin to each other machine to machine and one of those economies will happen it'll be like an amazon whole foods the prime account and all those machines talk to alexa or it'll be a independent machine listening to bitcoin no one in the middle and so did you actually get funded for your business? Uh, well, I started trading Bitcoin when it was okay. worthless, you know, okay. and I traded a lot of Bitcoin and I tried to play alchemy a little bit, buying Bitcoin, selling it for 10, 20, 30, 40 yeah. percent as it's moving every day and then buying more at the Bitcoin ATMs. So I've lived like that for about eight years and I've self-funded all of my businesses that way because I'm afraid of debt. My dad, as a Marine who fought in Vietnam, scared me about credit and debt as a kid and told me people buy gold during the wars don't think about money in any other regards than gold and then when bitcoin showed up i was like ah oh, that's what he was talking about a little more modern so uh -huh. and i see it fluctuate in a in a kind of warlike heartbeat um, one of my side jobs is counseling the u.s army on how to use bitcoin at wow. the at trading and doctrine command so i'm a mad scientist at the mad scientist <laughs> initiative and they requested some consultation on how to use Bitcoin and what is it going to affect. And I really think that that's the future where those kind of institutions realize, well, if they're holding gold, they need to start holding Bitcoin. And if machines that are weapons or vending machines can take that money and do something, they need to know how that works. Because mm -hmm. eventually they may have to pay a machine or someone in Bitcoin to do something. And I feel, as a son of a Marine, my patriotic nerve is really embedded in Bitcoin. I think it could save the country economically, create hundreds of thousands of jobs in the United States, even when AI is taking jobs. Mm -hmm. And I also think it, when AI or Terminator walks the earth, it gives humans sovereignty against that. Because no matter how smart that thing is, if it takes Bitcoin to do something, I still can tell it. I still have my free speech. I still have my, you know, so I feel that Bitcoin's philosophy is more like the last human sovereign thing we have of ownership when we're in a machine-run world. 
That's a really cool perspective. Thanks for I, sharing. I have nightmares about it too. So I mean, I try to put a positive light on that because yeah. it's Tomorrowland or Mad Max, and both those movies came out the same day in America. So <laughs> make a choice, people. You know, and and that's what I really focus on is right. like the future of Bitcoin is machines. Mm -hmm. And whether you call your phone or your computer screen that's moving Bitcoin, the machine, I think more like servos, motors, locks, things responding like a physical action. And eventually that would be the way that we control our own world, which is just a bunch of machines and, and us. I don't want a bunch of people telling machines what to do and saying, sorry, you can't get food. So the fact that a machine could feed me and it takes Bitcoin and no one says no is really important, I think, to the future, especially for not just Bitcoin, but the future of humanity. Yeah. Because my mom scared me about that, you know. The reli my mom was a very religious person, so oh, yeah. the whole money thing is a, that religious connotation, like who uses it, who pushes it, who controls it. That's really important. Well, she must be proud of her son today, who's um, involved in um, in disrupting that whole old incumbent system that really didn't work so well. She helped me found Bitcoin Inc., which I formed in Nevada. So, so it's I understand in a techie young kid world, even the old ladies like my mom understand that while this is important, it's going to feed people, you know. And um, do you have a funny, weird, unusual story about being involved with Bitcoin? So many of them. <laughs> um, Lots I, of weird ones everyone well, tells Well, me. I'll say this. Um, the guy that says he's Satoshi isn't here, and I've challenged him to a 12-pace duel three times, and he hasn't said anything. <laughs> um, other than that, like, I've tried to be a really ag aggressive pirate-like marine character for Bitcoin, and and be a tough, like, John Wayne character that, you know, like, doesn't take shit from anyone. And because I feel Bitcoin is, is a really youthful, positive kind of movement, and all the kids in it are very pacifist, and they're very open source and smart. But I was raised by a Marine who had Rambo's gun, you know, and he, he told me everything that X-Files talked about. So I see the world from that perspective, mm. And I know it's a really dirty world, mm -hmm. and all my Bitcoin friends who don't own guns or don't think anyone would like try to harm them because they're working on something important, yeah. that's the naivety I don't have. I, I feel very general Marine sergeant about Bitcoin, and that's why the military kind of talks to me, because they need someone who knows their lingo to say, hey, this is what a Satoshi is, and this is what Bitcoin is, and this is how a wallet works. But I'm not a pogue, you know, like they need to know that they're trusting someone who's like them. Otherwise, it's all fluff, you know. And, and also, it, there needs to be people represented from all walks of life yeah. th that believe in Bitcoin. I mean, again, I'm, I'm an old person and I was following it from 2008 when it was first launched. So um, I believed in it. I started working on Bitcoin in about 2010, like focusing on developing on it. But there was a point when I saw that it was worthless before and I was just looking at like, why would anyone put money into something like that? And I didn't understand the scarcity. As soon as I understood and was explained and read the white paper and, and kind of realized the scarcity, that immediately made me think, oh, this is what my dad was talking about. This is the gold thing. This is what moves now in the world. It's the heartbeat. And like, I don't sleep anymore. I watch Bitcoin's price 24 seven. It's, it's a pulse yes. and, and you can see society about to do things or responding to things almost because of Bitcoin now or it's, it's so sensitive that it, that it moves because of things like, one example, I, I don't say it's a positive story but I was up at three in the morning watching Bitcoin's price and one of the Lebanese prime minister assistants and a World Bank person all blew up in a car and they were tweeting about Hezbollah and about 10 seconds after that, Bitcoin went up 60%. And, and I know that it was like, is it people in that region responding that the World Bank person just got blown up? And those are the kind of things I've noticed at three in the morning. Yeah. Like, wow, this is, this is something you need to have a you know, pacemaker on <laughs> because it, it really means something's gonna happen. You know? So that's, that's, I know Bitcoin has like the hope for the future, and I want to see Bitcoin survive in the future, 
but I look very skeptically about the battleground earth that Bitcoin is in and how it's going to survive not just by itself, but in a war zone of humanity, you know, and machines. And I want Bitcoin to survive above all of that. I think it's the food for the future. But it's, it's a hard path when everyone's shooting at each other and, you know, claiming things. Well, it's, it sounds like you'll be the carrier of, of the um, resourcefulness and the ideas. I would, like to. I would like to. It's a stressful thing. You know, who wants to be responsible for gravity or water or Bitcoin? Like, the nobody well, does. Well, I mean, not, not that you're taking the, the weight I, of that. I would love to. I would love to. What, what I'm saying is that you have a part to play yeah. in, in this landscape, and, uh, and it's a very good part, like so Gavin thank you. Like said, no one wants to be benevolent dictator. I kind of want to be like, more like Captain Morgan, <laughs> and that's why my mom named me that way. It's not necessarily benevolent. I just want to make sure the ship survives. You know? Well, I'm sure the ship of Bitcoin is going to survive, and I know I'm you will help. Thank you so much, Morgan, and I'm looking forward to the panel. Okay.